Speakers and Cleats, the podcast. Heavy metal going. Welcome back to the mobile mobile version of the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. This Wednesday, November 29th, this is episode 54. I am obviously not in uh, the studio. So, what's up, guys? I was what's gonna up? say, what gave you that idea? <laughs> Having an out of a body know, this experience. Is, this is weird. I'm usually like where Zach is, and this is just like odd. I'm in the back of a car in Uvalde, you know, it's just. At least now we know we have the capability to do this type of stuff, though. So that's good. Yeah, so our house is now a home again. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys uh, coming on. As usual, that's Zach Hedrick on my right. Hopefully everyone else is right, too. Uh, Chuck Migatinic there on the left. Obviously, I'm Matt Roy on the right side of the screen. This is the High School Hype Squad episode of the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. Yeah, I had to figure it out. I don't know if this is a mirror <laughs> type of situation or like what what's going on, but we'll figure it out, guys. You know, um, 54. That's a great number. A lot of linebackers in 54. Brian Erlocker, right? Brian Erlocker, the guy who uh, beat your, beat your uh, Packers there for a long time. He was awful good, that's for sure. And... But we have to ask the question, Brian Erlocker, sans hair or with hair? Sans. Yeah, right? He looks weird with hair. I agree. <laughs> and it but just yeah. doesn't fit the middle linebacker also got his... look with hair. No, I, if it, I had he, head once he retired, nice he his. actually... Once he retired, he actually went on to a... Uh, there was a billboard of him right outside of Midway and he had hair on he had hair then and i was just like what the hell who is that i think those billboards like are still not, you, there matt and i think he's been the spokesperson i mean it looks good if you're going to do it what he did i would suggest you know if you're going to go to a place go to the place that he's suggesting because his looks amazing but he just still looks more like a dude with no hair yeah well, I, I want to know if he could have grown it out the whole time or if he, like, used Bosley, like, right when he started retire retirement and just, like, grew it all back. Interesting dilemma. No idea. But, yeah, tons uh, of linebackers. Also, like 50 – yeah, Matt. Zach Thomas, Bobby Wagner, Randy White, the uh, the Cowboys legend, Randy White, Super Bowl champ, co-MVP. Zach Thomas, also a former Dallas Cowboy for a time. That's right. Yeah, but he's more well known as a dolphin. Oh, sure. Yeah. And then uh, I always have to put some baseball on here because I know I know Chuck. So Goose Gossage also fifty four. Yeah. That's a good one. I just saw a video of him there the other day, and he looks pretty good for his age. He's still getting out and doing clinics and stuff like that. Still rocking the mustache. Yep, was a menacing figure then, and probably still is today. <laughs> there is almost no better facial hair ever uh, in in any league. League, Goose Gossage's mustache. Raleigh fingers. Raleigh is a fingers close is up second. there. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, that's true. That's, that's it's a good the point. reliever. It's, a good point. it's you the, know, the, I about about the relievers and the mustaches. The I mean, you guys. need a good mustache every now and then. That's what I'm talking. Uh, about. All right, guys, let's get it. Let's get into it. So, round three roundup is what we're gonna start with. Obviously, the part of our high school hype squad episode. So, uh, before we get into round four, I wanted to give some flowers to uh, some teams that we lost. Obviously, Jay. Lost to Dripping Springs uh, in in the Alamo Dome on Saturday. First and first and for, foremost, hats off to Gary Gutierrez and all the guys. They came out and they got punched or they punched Dripping Springs in the mouth and forced Dripping Springs to respond in that game. They came out, picked them off, and then J um, Jackson Gutierrez got in for two early touchdowns. They were with it all through uh, pretty much midway through the third quarter and then dripping spring started running away with it but hats off to gary gutierrez and the guys over at jay having their best season in history yeah i don't think there's any question about it right probably the story of the year in high school football in terms of you know where did we think you would be and where did you end up and you know if you're john jay you don't have to apologize for anything or anybody you get three rounds deep that's not only something that they did which was historic in terms of school history but i mean there are as we're talking about this week, I mean, there are not a whole lot of teams left. So, I mean, they did everybody proud, not only for themselves, but for the entire 2-1-0. And as Gary Gutierrez would say, for the 4-1-0, too, because they were the only <laughs> team playing inside Loop 410. Yeah. Well, and why am I not surprised to hear that the J defense got a pick in that Dripping Springs game? They were just ball hawks all season long. It's, it's ridiculous what that defense can do. Yeah, what more could be said? I mean, 
that that rushing attack too between uh, Jackson and, and Zach Mota. Oh man, that's that's going to be well remembered and in, in John Jay High School history. Yeah, and you saw a lot of those NISD schools. They all made it to the second round. Brennan obviously lost to Lake Travis, and then you have Harlan who who got steel in that in that third round and. Harlan put together probably the best or one of the best uh, um, seasons that they've ever had in their short history. And Eddie Salas, they, not enough can be said about, not enough good things at least can be said about Eddie Salas and the job that he and Noah Ferris and Elijah Walton and and uh, all the guys over there did. I mean, they were just fantastic all year long and ran into a buzzsaw in the Steel Knights. I, I mean, and you would think, I remember a couple of Harlan teams from a couple of seasons ago where they had some really good athletes. And you think, oh man, you know, with these guys, they, I think it just goes to show if you have more of a team, it's not always about athletes. If it's just a team and you had playmakers on both sides of the ball, you know, it, it, you know, and, and ball bounces your way a couple of times for Harlan and, you know, it, it works out that, that game against Brennan, I think really kind of catapulted them, you know, beat, knocking them off for the first time in school history. That was just kind of like, all right, yeah, we can, we can do something this season. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about actually seeing the fruits of your labor. And if you punch through and get a win like that, you know, they'd never beaten Brennan in school history. You know what that can do for a team in terms of confidence and galvanizing both sides of the ball. And then, you know, I was telling Matt the story last week, about having been over to Harlan to see Joshua Cephas speak to the team and just some of the great things that Coach Salas was talking to his team about had nothing to do with X's and O's. He was talking to his guys about, you know, there's a difference between being a man and being the man. Mm -hmm. You know, he was trying to teach guys to be a man, not the man. And But going in, I walked into the building and, you know, I couldn't find out, I couldn't find where I was going. Of course, I was lost trying to find the, the meeting room that they were in. You lost. No. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, somebody grabbed me and took me to the assistant coach's office and I walked into that room and there were four coaches on each side of the room in front of a computer screen and they were busting film. They were drawing up plays. They were doing all kinds of crazy high tech stuff. And I mean, it was studying and preparing for the coaches in one room while Eddie was delivering the, the key messages of life to his team and another. And then obviously, you know, marrying that everything together. was yeah. going to marry at some point. But again, it's just fascinating to see how much work goes in with, you know, the coaches and what they're doing to try to prepare for a game and then also prepare these guys for life as well. So that was a very nice eye opening moment and a nice little peek behind the curtain that I was very appreciative that coach Salas allowed me to end to, to get a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he did a great job turning those boys into men. And they they grew up really fast this season, and they've grown up together for the last four years. So uh, the it didn't catch us all too much by surprise that they were good this year, but how good they were and how fast they they got that good was, was pretty impressive. Um, lastly, uh, Alamo Heights, they fell to Piper. And we'll talk about Piper more here in a little bit. I got to talk to uh, Coach Nick Rogers a little bit earlier today, and so we'll play that interview for you for everyone later. But Alamo Heights, uh, just to put a bow on their season, once again, one of the best teams in our area, the one of the most prestigious teams in our area. And Coach Ritterman always does such a great job. But I think once again, it comes to their detriment how bad their dish, not how bad their district is, but how uncompetitive their games are because. They made a point on the Bally broadcast a couple of times that Piper's been in a lot of close games all year long. And then you have Alamo Heights, who hasn't really experienced it. They have exper game experience when it comes to their depth because they've gotten a lot of guys in games. But you don't have a, that in-game, late-game, fourth-quarter, close ball game situation. And I feel like that really helped Piper, and it really kind of uh, served uh, Alamo Heights badly. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a – Fair, Fair point. take. Yeah. It's, you know, Ritterman's always doing a good job there. They're always good. And, you know, I think just this year it was Piper's just a little bit better. But, I mean, to your point, I mean, Piper played one heck of a hard schedule. You know, you're looking at – I know you got Wimberley on this list. Wimberley beat Piper just to tell you how good they are. Kind so, of waxed them too. Right. So, <laughs> you, know, it, there, you know, there's something to be said about – you know, battle testing your team week in and week out. And obviously you've got the schedule. There's really not a whole lot you can do about it. And, you know, some of those teams that Alamo Heights had to play this year were a little down. But, you know, at the end of the day, 
you still got to go line up and beat who's in front of you. And I, don't, I know Ron Ridman wouldn't make any excuses about losing to Piper and using anything that happened during the course of the year. You know, it was just Piper was a better day on that day, a yeah. better team on that day. Chuck, to that point, yeah. like you said, yeah, it's it, it. And Matt, to your point, too, it's kind of maybe a not as strong of a schedule. But like Chuck just said, you know, it's like you still got to go out and handle your business. And they did that week in and week out. And sure, they, it, you know, the final score, it's like, oh, man, they steamrolled teams. But I remember at the end of the season uh, going out and, and seeing Harlandale and Alamo Heights. And Harlandale was kind of keeping up with them a little bit. And then sure, the mules pulled away in the second half. So there's, you know, bits, I think, there that they learn, you know, okay, yeah. And, I don't think a lot of people were expecting Alamo Heights to go that far just because they lost so many guys, especially on the defensive side. But I mean, it's, they, they play it the right way and they've got, they've kind of got a factory over there, uh, over in Alamo yeah. Heights. Yeah, man. And I think we touched on this last week, right? I think we both thought that Alamo Heights would win that game, but you know, I think we both talked to enough people, you know, I know I, coach Paul Alexander told me, he goes, Look, I wouldn't be surprised if Piper won that game. They're damn good. Mm -hmm. And I'm paraphrasing because he didn't say damn. But <laughs> it no, was, I mean, they're, you know, they're, 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 they're obviously they're good. I mean, they did what they needed to do. And I mean, I think they shocked a lot of people beating Alamo Heights. And, you know, now you don't, you're not going to discount them this week after what they just did. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's get into the matchups for this week. Uh, Steel is going to play Dripping Springs. Steel 12 and 1, Dripping Springs 11 and 2 on the season. First matchup between the two schools, Saturday, 7 p.m. in the Alamo Dome. Um, Dripping Springs has kind of skated, not skated by, but they've barely escaped a couple of matchups. Uh, Zach, you saw them against Judson, and Judson was up 10 in the third and 10 in the second, and they, they barely escaped that game. And then last week, they had a battle on their hands with Jay. Um, for the first three quarters and then started running away in the fourth, just like they kind of came back against Judson in the fourth. So I think Steele in this matchup is, I don't know if they're a dog. I think they might even be a favorite if we were putting lines on a matchup. I think they they might be favored in this matchup because Steele is, I think, a better team than Dripping Springs. Yeah, I would I would agree with you there. And Matt, to your point, you bring up those few, those past games. Uh, I'm sure that is the, the big talking point for Coach Signs is, hey, Judson, our, our fellas from across the street, you know, lost to him on a comeback. We saw what they did last weekend. So Coach Signs is stressing to him. We may be up three scores, but we're going to put the foot on the gas and make sure that there is no chance that Dripping Springs comes back because they've done it, you know, twice now during this run. Yeah, I, I'm Absolutely. with you on that because, I mean, there's something to be said about a team that never feels like it's out of a game. No matter how they start, they know they're going to finish well. But to me – Steel just has everything you need, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. And they can mm -hmm. play differently. I think that's what's so impressive. I mean, they got – they have the ability to run the ball, kill clock, and then, you know, get just after you with that defense. Air, yeah. mm -hmm. But then we saw last week, too, they had a lot of home run balls in that game, too, too. So they can do whatever it is required, you would think, to get them to this point. And they have done it. And, yeah, I mean, I would have to think they're the favorites. And, I mean, if I'm picking a game – you got to pick the winner of this one. I'm going with Steele. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, the, their home run ability has really gotten them this far, combined with some good defense. I mean, they have so many weapons on the offense with Royal Capel and Jalen Cooper and Jonathan Hatton and Chad Warner, and the list goes on and on. So, and you kind of saw their medal, uh, no pun intended, with uh, in this last game against um, against Harlan. They go up 20-0, and you would think maybe you can ease off and let off the gas pedal. Harlan starts coming back. They're down 20-13. And then Steele kind of just asserts their dominance. They get a score to go up 26, 4, 13 before the half. And then they come out, they score again after the half. And they're just like, all right, we, we had to settle in a little bit, but they had it in the bag. So I, I, I feel like Steele's going to hopefully, and um, I think that we all think that they're going to advance to the state semis uh, next week. Let's get to Smithson Valley real quick. Smithson Valley, Davenport and uh, Piper, three Comal ISD schools, which is not a huge district. And three Comal ISD schools all in the regional finals this year. Can you get, Chuck, just how good is Comal ISD right now? Yeah, right. I mean, I think you just said it all, right? I mean, you get to this point in the season, and one of those schools, right, was is playing in a lower classification in the playoffs than they played then in during the regular season, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that the way yeah, I understand Davenport it? Yeah, beat, Davenport beat Piper – or, sorry, Piper beat Davenport this year, but – Davenport's 4A, uh, Piper and Smithson Valley, uh, 
5A, D1, and 5A. Uh, yeah, imagine if all those kids were all at Smithson Valley, as good as Smithson Valley. Is, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Yeah, speaking of Smithson Valley, they're playing AM Consolidated, AM Consolidated 10 and 3, Smithson Valley 12 and 1. The first matchup between the two teams ever, uh, Friday, 7 o'clock, Gupton or Gupton Stadium uh, in Cedar Park. Um, Smithson Valley really ridding some demons last week. They they lost to College Station last year. I believe it was in the third round um, on a goal line stand. They were down by one score trying to go in to win the game, and they get stopped on the goal line and end up losing to College Station. Well, this year, as fate may have it, they face off again. Smithson Valley beats them 26-21, and sure enough, they, they kind of, you know, got some revenge from last year. So I, I'm sure that feels really good for Larry Hill and the guys. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. And it's this time of year or, you know, any game really week to week, you have to earn everything you get if you're going to beat Smithson Valley. I mean, they're very, very tight. They're very cohesive. And I'm not talking about just player to player. I mean, you know, this system and how they play football is embedded in these kids since they were little guys, you know, coming up through the Pee Wee side and then mm -hmm. through the middle school stuff. I mean, it's – it's really, really fascinating to see what kind of a machine Larry has created there. And it's always fun to watch. And, again, they're fun to watch, too, because they're tough. They're hard-nosed. They play the right way. Everything that you want in a high school football program, that's what you get at Smithson Valley. Yeah, in full agreement. I mean, uh, and you think, too, after, Matt, to your point, exercising those demons a little bit from the last year's playoff run, you think – okay, maybe is there a bit of an emotional hangover, but when you have a guy like Larry Hill in charge, you know that's not going to happen. So uh, it's it's immediately focused on this next one. So, But it's those A&M, those college station schools are are also tough. So it's this one's going to be really fun to, to see how it plays out as well. Yeah, to me that one's a toss-up. I don't know who's going to win, but yeah. I just know that I'm going to be wanting to sit in front of the TV and watch it uh, or sit at my desk and watch it while we're putting highlights together, Zach. Um, some other big matchups before we get to Piper, uh, Davenport is playing Port Lavaca Calhoun. That's their first meeting. It's Friday, 7 PM in the Alamo dome. Uh, Wimberley is playing Sinton. Wimberley is still undefeated 13 and 0. That's uh 7 30 Friday, Southwest legacy stadium. Wimberley leads the all-time series three to two. Edna is playing Blanco. That's a rematch from last year's regional final round, uh, at which Edna won. Blanco 11 and two right now, Edna 10 and two, 7 p.m. Friday, Memorial Stadium in Bastrop. And lastly, Tidehaven is playing against Poth. Poth, uh, both teams 12 and one, 7 p.m. Friday, Memorial Stadium in Victoria. Poth is 4 and 0 all time. Poth actually beat them in the regional final last year as well. They won that game 18 to six. Let's get to Piper and Liberty Hill. So Piper is uh, kind of the team we're featuring the most here. They have so much interesting about their team, their story, their head coach, a second year varsity program going to be playing Liberty Hill, who is a prestigious, just perennial playoff state contender. And it should, their Piper now, just in their second year of varsity, is 12 and one when they were two and eight last year. It's just so impossible to comprehend how good they are, how fast they got this good. And um, it's just it's it's one of the more amazing stories that we've seen. Yeah, I agree. And doing it without one of their best players or one of their wide receivers went down and mm -hmm. I mean, first round. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable how much or how they've been able to turn things around. I mean, it just does not compute that. You know, it's one thing to flip your season and have a really good team, but to be doing this in the postseason too. I mean, again, it speaks to the level of competition that they're playing every week and. You know, Jack Green went out there and got some interviews, and those kids that he interviewed, I mean, they would get the Gold Star Award for having sound bites <laughs> of the year. I mean, those kids are measured, they're thoughtful, and, you know, I think it speaks to a lot about what's going on there, you know, behind the scenes as well. I mean, they got good players, they got heady players too. Yeah, I mean, they've been doing it all year, you know. It, at the beginning, it's kind of like, all right, Piper, yeah, you know, get a, get a few wins in a row, and then – um yeah, this that that one against Liberty Hill during the regular season. Um, Liberty Hill was kind of down to start the year, but to beat those guys, you know, that's that that was really kind of like the eye opener. Like, oh wow, Piper's for real, and um, you know, yep. 
it's it's going to be really great to see this rematch. It's it's going to be it's tough to beat a team twice, though, you know. Yeah, I was just about to say when I was talking to Coach uh, Coach Rogers a little earlier today, and we'll hear from him here in a second. He said it's kind of a detriment to them to play a team twice. I mean, they just beat them four weeks ago, and it was a close matchup. It was twenty three thirty three. Uh, 33. And he's like, when you're playing a team like Liberty Hill and a coaching staff as good as Liberty Hill's coaching staff, and you have to defend that triple option, you know they're going to put in some wrinkles into it. It's just, it's hard to beat a team twice. But I, I, at this point, I think if anyone can do it, it's going to be Coach Rogers, Jake South, and the boys up in Piper. The one saving grace with that is that regular season game was on the road at their place. The the Piper Warriors going out there and, and beating them in Liberty Hill's house by 10 points on the road. So that's that's pretty impressive to do. So... I mean, you know, yeah, it, it is still, it doesn't take away. You got to beat them twice. And, and Matt, like you said, defending that triple option, there's all sorts of different things that you can add to it. That'll, that'll change it up just slightly. But uh, I do, I think that is impressive. And that, that definitely gives the Warriors a, an edge of confidence a little bit. No doubt. Yeah. And to, to kind of compound the amazing season that they've had, what coach Rogers himself has overcome is something that is just can't be understated is what for people who don't know he lost his wife to cancer in in january um she was diagnosed when he was at his old job in cedar park uh and and the way that the the community can entirely rallied around him when his wife died and his team plays for him plays for anna and everybody like that it's just it's something that's so impressive and then you'll hear it here in a second when he explains that now he has another he, he has remarried and his current wife, I believe her name is Cassie, also lost her former husband to cancer. And so mm. they've almost bonded through tragedy. Um, and to see the community that's kind of come around them, it's something that is it can't be understated. And it's just so, so impressive how they've kind of bonded through tragedy and have come out even stronger on the other side. Well said. Uh, let's get to that interview real quick. I keep teasing it, so let's just get to it. Uh, Coach Rogers gave me a, a great interview a little bit earlier, so we'll play that for you, and then we'll come and wrap everything up. How are you this week? You excited? I'm great. Yes, thank you for having me. No, we, we couldn't be more excited to, to have this opportunity. Yeah, well, we love uh, on Wednesdays here on the Sneakers and Cleats podcast to, uh, to, to let people know like what's going on in high school sports, and there's nothing more uh, – garnering more headlines and more attention than you guys right now. I mean, going eight, two and eight last year, coming around now 12 and one on the season. How did you make this remarkable turnaround this year? Um, you know, I, I, I think obviously it, it helps having seniors this year, you know, like it, it was an uphill battle uh, last year, not, not having seniors. And I think at times just being physically outmatched, you know, and then not having depth. You know, so um, our, our sophomores, current sophomores are, are very good. Uh, they're, they're a very talented group. And so they, they've they helped with that depth a lot to where now those, those seniors that we couldn't, you know, rest last year ever. Uh, now they're they're able to 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 rest and they, they're they playing fresher. Um, and I, obviously one one more offseason helped us as well to be able to, to close that gap with the physicality. Um, and, and our kids are just they're they're bought into what we do. This is a great community, great place, uh, and I, hopefully we uh, have a chance to be good for years to come. I was reading an interview you did with um, San Antonio Express News. You said the turning point this season when you kind of knew something was cooking here was when you guys beat Davenport, and despite mm -hmm. them being four A um, and you guys a, a grade above that, why is it that 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 Davenport win was really so kind of instrumental to you kind of thinking, oh, we we got something here? Yeah, I think um, due to fam familiarity with them, we, we've played them the last two years, um, even before we were a varsity, and we, we took some – we took it on the chin, if you will, for lack of a better term. And we we know that that's a great coaching staff over there. They're very talented uh, for a 4A football team. And and I, and I think sometimes um, fans, if you will, they just assume you're a 5A, you should be better than them, you know, type deal. But shoot, the Wimberleys of the world, the Bernies of the world, I mean, they can play, you know. And when, when we were at Cedar Park and we were a very good 5A football team there, we could play with a lot of 6As, you know. And so I say that – all to say this is Davenport's a quality football team. You know, they're still in the playoffs uh, also in the fourth round. And so because of the way they had beaten us the last two years, 
and competing against them in seven on seven, even for us to go out and win uh, this, this year, I kind of knew we were taking that next step, you know, because sometimes, you know, when you lose to somebody, the psychological aspect of it, even, you know, just getting our kids to believe like, all right, you you can beat them, you know? And so once, once we beat them, when I did it, that, that's why I say that was a turning point for us is we knew we were a pretty good program at that point. How crazy is it? Uh, speaking of how good Davenport is, Smithson Valley also really good. Yeah. And you guys also really good. All still in the playoffs. All yeah. in Comal ISD. What does that say about the talent that not only you guys have, but all of Comal ISD has, being that there's still three teams in the playoff, all in different divisions, and you guys are all still vying for a state title? Yeah, yeah, no. Obviously, uh, Smithson Valley has a rich history. You know, they, they've been good for a long time, you know, and, and the consistency that Coach Hill and his staff um, have, have been able to accomplish is very impressive, you know, and that's that's the goal here. And it, it reminds me kind of the heyday in Leander ISD. You know, when I first got there, uh, that was back like 2010. You know, we had several teams that were ultra competitive, Cedar Park. You know, now you have Vandegriff. You know, Rouse has been pretty good uh, there as well. So that's kind of what it reminds me of. You know, it's a new growth area. Uh, with a lot of development, um, obviously a lot of talent in the area right now too. So it, it's uh, like someone said earlier to me today, it's a, it's a great time to be in Kamal ISD. So. Yeah. I can't imagine a better one speaking football wise. I mean, my yep. goodness. Um, so you guys have uh, Liberty Hill this week, obviously um, coming up on Friday. What, give me the scouting report. You guys beat them a couple of weeks ago um, in, in district. Does, do you think that gives you a leg up or is that almost a detriment? Cause now they've kind of seen you. Yeah. I, th- I think in football, it's it's a detriment more than it gives you a leg up. Uh, I think it's very hard to beat anybody two times, you know, in a, in a football season, but especially a program like Liberty Hill. Um, similar to what I said about Smithson Valley, I'll say the same about them. They're they're proven. They have all the history. You know, I think I, I read the other day, this is the 14th year in a row that they've made the regional finals. And so you, you can't be that consistent you know, by coincidence or just by luck, you know, so they clearly know what they're doing. Great, great players, great coaches. Um, And so for the challenge for our kids is to not fall for the trap of because you beat them, you just assume that you're going to beat them again. You know, they're, they're good coaches. They're going to make adjustments. And so we we have to be even that much more locked in and focused on our job and task at hand uh, to go earn the victory uh, on Friday night. Um, I don't usually like getting into the X's and O's because it goes over my head and a lot of other people's heads. But um, when it comes to Liberty Hill, they run that triple option a lot of the time and almost all, exclusively. I saw them a little earlier this year against Wagner. I uh, saw them last year. They've beaten Alamo Heights two years in a row. So you guys are coming off the win against Alamo Heights. What's the key to kind of stopping that offense that I think actually – didn't they put up 80-some-odd points against Hutto earlier this year too? Like they're just they a, a machine up there. They did. Yeah. Um it starts up front, you know, so to, to beat somebody like Liberty Hill. Uh, and that was the challenge to our guys last time is I put it on the offensive line and defensive line. So the, the game is going to be won in the trenches. You know, you, you have to be physical up front, create penetration. And then on the back end, uh, starting the second second level with your linebackers and then third level with your, your secondary is you got to be very disciplined in your keys. Um, because with the, all the misdirection and the smoke and mirrors, uh, as we like to say, you, you can't get lost in chasing people. If you if you stay dedicated and committed to your key and your discipline in that, it can semi guide you to the football, if you will. I won't give out what that key is, but that's what it comes down to: is physical physicality and discipline, and then just staying focused from play to play. And if you can do that, then you can you can have some success in stopping that that offense. It's all about staying gap sound, right, Coach? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so this year, I mean, people might not be too familiar with your program, your players, and everything since you guys are so new. A second-year program making it to now hopefully 13-1 and one and getting to the fifth round of the, of the state playoffs. So familiarize me and familiarize the people who are going to be watching this to with a few of your players, maybe three on offense, three on defense, guy, key guys who have helped you get here, obviously probably starting with your quarterback, Jake South. Yeah. Uh, yeah, three offensive players. I would say senior Jake South. He's had a tremendous year. You know, he's had some bad luck the last two years with with his health. 
You know, he's had some injuries, which is why he's not been able to play for us the last couple of years. Uh, but he's been a tremendous leader, teammate. Obviously, the numbers are there, the talent's there. And then Jake Strachan is the next one that I would say. He's a senior receiver for us, but he's been our quarterback the last two years. And so kind of sticking along those lines, talking about a, um, a great example as a teammate, Jake Strachan is another one, you know, to move over to a different position um, and then be able to excel the way that he has and be as productive as he has been super impressive. I don't know how he caught that ball in the end zone for your guys' first touchdown against Alamo Heights. Uh, he just wrestled that away from the defender. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. No, and that's that's who he is. I mean, Jake is just – he's a football player. You know, like if he weren't playing receiver, he could play safety for us. There's no doubt. You know, he punts for us. He's he's a tough kid. Uh, he's going to battle for you. Um, and like I said, he, he, he's just the definition of a football player. And then Isaiah Champagne – uh, he's a junior wide receiver for us. He's very explosive. So if you saw us play Alamo Heights on Saturday, I mean, obviously he he had a very good game. He popped off and, the page. Yeah. So he's he's been ultra productive for us all while doing it with a cast on his hand uh, that we we club up, you know. So that that makes it even more impressive because he doesn't drop many. I mean, he is about as sure handed of a kid as I've ever had, you know, in my coaching career. And so to do what he's doing. Uh, with that club on his hand is just makes it all the more impressive. Um, and then on the defensive side, our, our middle is, is very strong. So Caden glass been a senior leader for us all year long. Um, he's our Mike linebacker. I mean, he, he just makes plays uh, each and every week. If you watch him, he's a ton of fun and it's, it's just a matter of time before he's blowing somebody up. I mean, he's due for a, a big hit at some point in time in the game. That's going to get everybody on and on. Um, David Huntsman is kind of one of the, the tone setters up front. He's a D lineman defensive end for us senior. Um, he's done a great job. He's a captain for us. Um, he's a disruptor, like you said, about being gap sound, you know, those, those guys don't get a ton of the glory because they don't, they don't make a bunch of the tackles, but it starts with them, you know, up front. And so he's, he's a gap disruptor and he, he, he caused a lot of havoc for us on the front line. And then I'd finish with Jackson Hopper. On the back end, I don't know how many interceptions he has. It feels like he has one a game. Um, but, I mean, he's had multiple interceptions this year. He's a junior safety for us. He's he's one of those ball hawk guys that he just shows up and makes plays week in and week out. So Everyone needs one of those guys on their team, at least yes, one. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so, Coach, you guys have obviously had um, – uh, you personally have had a kind of a tumultuous year um, – with your wife passing away a little earlier this season. I, I was reading an article a little earlier today um, about the Liberty Hill Educational Foundation uh, mm-hmm. and, and their donation, I guess, to to um, Pipers or Comalis yes, Education Foundation. Can you tell me a little bit about that? And does that make this game even more meaningful? Yeah. And so th- actually they did that. So that would have been the last football Yeah, season. that was that was before she had yeah. passed away. Yeah. Correct? So she passed away in January, um, this past January. Um, so yeah, last, last year, especially, yes, was very tumultuous, uh, for my family. And there's a little connection there, uh, in the Liberty Hill community because my family, we, we moved here from Cedar Park. Um, and so like we, we knew some families in that, that community, um, that knew us, knew Anna. Um, and so that, that was part of, you know, that, that connection there. And yeah, I, I would say it gives it, um, I don't know that I would say it gives it, any more meaning necessarily, you know, like it was a great thing. And that community understands well too, because of uh, the loss of coach Walker before this coach Walker, you know, he lost his brother to cancer. Um, And so that, that community understands it, you know, how to rally around one of their own, you know, during a time of loss. And so I I thought it was an exceptional deal uh, for them to do that for my family this past year. Um, And so, yeah, there's that, common um we understand i guess if you will loss and and how to overcome and and see the good on the other side as well it's unfortunate to be bonded through that but so many people um are in this country and around the world um seeing liberty hill so they so they made a donation to your guys's uh education foundation correct yes. in, in, in yes, your sir. name yes sir gotcha. they did. Yes, sir. um and so speaking directly to um, what you've gone through this year, 
how has that I saw I saw the sideline reporter on Bally uh, kind of asked you about it after the game and you said that your wife would probably be proud and, and just so happy to see the success you guys are having this year how has that been for you since January um, and and now almost a year later seeing the success you guys are having what, what's that community buy-in and, and support been like for you um it's it's been tremendous you know on on both sides because like the the other part of that story now like coming out on the other side and so i don't know if you know this and i, I didn't really share this with the valley guys but I, i've actually been remarried since then and so my wife my current wife she lost her husband to cancer and uh she was in the smithson valley community and so like as she was going through that, we, we, our stories were kind of paralleling at the same time. And we're just obviously right up the road. Um, our school, when we opened, that's, that, that's where we took from like was Smithson Valley. And so we, we have um, similar ties with that, but like on my wife and I both know, you know, extreme loss and it, now extreme beauty on the other side of it. And so I think our football team is now seeing f from the, how this conversation started. We've gone from two and eight to 12 and one or 13 and one and whatever it is, you know, like we walked through extreme adversity last year together, you know, in my personal life and on the football field, it was happening, you know, and now they've been able to see me, my family, Cassie's family um, come through on the other side, you know, and, and, we, we, we believe in Jesus and that everything happens for a reason. Um, and I think that we, as we say, this is beauty from ashes, you know, and it's, it's also playing its way out on the football field as well uh, simultaneously. And so for my team, I think it's been s somewhat inspirational, you know, to see like me walk through that, but then also what God can provide on the other side of something so hard and difficult in your life. Um, and like I said, it's, it's been fun to, be able to experience success on the football field too. Yeah, we have a, a one of my bosses here. His daughters go to Piper, so he he kind of told me about your your guys' situation. How your wife now current wife um, yep. was married to a, a, a pitcher, a pitcher, yeah, a pitcher, right? So he well, uh, well, so he played he played football and baseball at Tech. And oh right, he, right, right. He, yeah, he was a receiver at Tech, and so like they did a big story, you know, on him and Larry Hill and. um so yeah, and so that they had she she has we now have four kids, and so I had two, so now we have six. So it's like like the Brady Bunch, but you <laughs> know, our our kids and us like we we know, uh, you know, but obviously better than most, like what what it feels like, and that's why our, even our our kids like have bonded so much because they um, experienced such a loss, you know, them losing their their dad and my two girls losing their mom. Um, it's it's been a it's been a blessing like that. I mean, that's and, and a miracle, honestly, like the way that God has worked and intertwined in our lives and brought us together and the two and the two communities, I will say, you know, right. Well, to see you get to see like two families be devastated by something like that and then come out on the other side, even I don't want to say stronger, but but in a situation where you guys are now bonded through this tra these tragedies and now have, mm -hmm. have grown to be who you are and and see everything. It's that's something that uh it doesn't happen very often. Yeah, no. And, and I would say like it, it, it changes you forever. You know, and that's what Cassie and I say. Um, it changes you for better. Um, even though it, it is such a loss. Um, again, God allows us to see that no matter what happens in our life, like he still loves you, you know, and can still bring you out on the other side. But and, and again, not going to say better or anything like that, but something that we can't predict, you know, that neither one of us saw on the, on the other side of that mountain, that was something beautiful waiting for us. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely changes you for good, you know, and also I'll, I'll say this, like it puts everything back in its proper perspective, you know, cause even with the season that we're having and all those things, like you don't take things for granted, you know, the, the way that you once did. So you, you learn to really appreciate every day and every moment that you get uh, because we both watched our spouses die at a very young age, um, you know, and so like we, we know that life is uh, it's it can be short, you know, and so it's, don't don't take 
any day that, that God gives us for granted. And coach, we saw how the community of, of Liberty Hill kind of invested in you guys. How was the Piper community, the Smithson Valley community, the Comal ISD community, when you're going through this, your family's going through this, and mm-hmm. your football team is, is you know, consequentially also going through their, their coach um, having to deal with such a devastating loss? Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they stepped in a lot of ways, you know, whether it was, you know, mill trains or financially, you know, helping with medical bills. I mean, they've, they've been here every step of the way on both sides, you know, Cassie would tell you the same thing from the Smithson Valley community, the way that they supported her family, um, through their loss. And then the Piper community, same for my family, you know, and haven't stopped, you know, now obviously not needing the mill trains and all of those things, but they still, have rallied around us um, and supported us even in this new chapter of our, of our lives. Is that something um, when you accepted the job and sorry, we're going a little long here, but it's um, fascinating. This kind of conversation. Um, Is this something you were expecting or even thought of when not her death, but the, the um, community rallying around you when you accepted this job at Piper that the community would, would go into and invest in you so heavily? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that um, it was something that I really spent a lot of time thinking about. What I will say is this is so when my former wife was first diagnosed, we were in Cedar Park, like I said, and, and that community um, rallied around us then, you know, when she was first diagnosed and she was sick and um, it wasn't a great diagnosis. You know, and so, but they were there and they supported us. And so when I interviewed for this job and I saw, you know, the school and kind of started be familiarizing myself with this community, it reminded me a lot of ways uh, of Cedar Park and what we were leaving, you know. And so to say that I thought about it, no, not necessarily, but I'm not surprised either the way that they stepped in. And if anything, they just proved me right and my family right. Uh, for us choosing to come here and leave something that was very good um, there and our supporting cast there. um, It almost just left no doubt in our minds that we made the right decision to bring our families here um, the way that they have stepped up and supported us through the thick and thin, you know, the good and the bad. So, and I, I know that they'll have my back and I have theirs, you know, no matter what happens in life. Coach, I hope that, uh, this Friday in San Marcos, it, it, it's a uh, step in the right direction for another good thing to happen in your life. And uh, you guys pull out another dub and hopefully we'll see you. Hopefully we'll see you in the semis. I, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Hopefully so. Man, I really hope we have like three or four teams left after this year, this week, at least <laughs> like we, I feel like we have someone at every, at every uh, rank right now, six, a, division two both of the 5a ranks both the 4a ranks like we we need some of these teams to make it through the semis we got to go to jerry world guys right that's what i'm talking about i mean you got to like steel's chances i think right up off the top and you know but all these other teams too i mean it's like you look at the matchups and you go okay i mean you can see them winning so yeah. you know hopefully all of them punch through. Well, we got a half dozen left so <laughs> the more the merrier as far as i'm concerned yeah a half dozen i think uh, you know four or five of them have, have real good shots, you know, of, of kind of punching their ticket through. So it's, it's going to be a fun Friday, Friday night and, and Saturday night of football with that, you know, kind of one hangover there uh, into Saturday yeah, night. Are, yeah. Steel, right. These are the best, mm-hmm. these are the best weekends, man. Best weekends are college, college football championship weekend, along with the uh, regional finals here. So got a lot of games going on. Sad, sad for your Oklahoma Sooners. There's those Zach. sorry. Yeah. You know, it happens. It's different. <laughs> You put your destiny in in another team's hands. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's especially the, when that's that all the Texas Longhorns. Teams, yeah, that, that, well, the Texas Longhorns were in the exact same situation yep. last year, so you know she was kind of on the other foot. So um, th- that's going to be a interesting one because the way Oklahoma State lost it a couple of years ago was just you know by a yard uh, crazy. But Texas going in heavily favored. But Mike Gundy, man, he's kind of a riverboat gambler when it comes up to going against Longhorns. Yeah, right. He's had a lot of success over the last nine or 10 years against Texas. Uh And if anybody can preach hate to the opposition, it is Mike Gundy. So that's going to be a fascinating matchup. And 
And then it'll be even more fascinating because if Texas wins, man, there's going to be they got a shot. Bedlam. They got a shot. Yeah, but after that <laughs> ranking came out last night, no, yeah, they, I mean they, they need, got less they, of a shot. They need help big time. Yeah, yeah, they need a lot of help. They need a, they need chaos. Uh, Zach, you and I will probably get to that more often, more on uh, Friday when we come back for the Sneaker Cleats podcast. That is it for this episode. Thank you, everyone, to uh, for bearing with me and, and being uh, away. But I'm glad that we know that we uh, can actually do this now and, and get in some live interviews. And, you know, Luis set everything up. So thanks to Luis. Props to props to him over there. So uh, that's all we got for you today Take on the Sneaker Cleats podcast. <laughs> Remember to download, subscribe, rate, review, on subscribe resubscribe tell a friend tell an enemy give us a five-star rating give some feedback we will see you on friday right here sneakers cleats podcast see you guys